Good morning, Dunamis Life Church. We are so glad that you've joined us once again. It is time to praise the Lord. It is time to worship him and exalt him. Amen. We first of all, let's just thank God that Brother Scott is doing much better. Amen. We thank God Mother Butler posted that he's doing much better. We want to continue to pray for his complete and total healing. Amen. So today is Communion Sunday, so remember to get all of your communion items together, amen. We'll remind you again um, after praise and worship, but let us begin to exalt the Most High, amen. Jesus declared that if I be lifted up above the earth, I will draw all men unto me, amen, amen. Let's worship. Put your hands together.
From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. up amen amen you know because the Lord is our shepherd because he's our light and he's our salvation we have nothing to fear amen David said the Lord is the strength of my life of whom should I be afraid amen so we just want to recognize that he is the everlasting God we have nothing to fear amen whatever may come our way any uncertainty it's a lot of uncertainty going on right now amen but we live in faith and in trust in the everlasting God let's declare it amen
We're just worshiping God because he is our reality. Hallelujah. I need you to declare you don't know the power in your praise, the power in your word, the warfare to break through in spite of your circumstances. He your reality. He is the everlasting. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We declare your greatness in the earth right now. We thank you that anything that tries to exalt itself against your established word in our life, that we are more than conquerors, we are more than overcomers. God, every circumstance, every care that every person is carrying right now upon their heart, God, we cast it upon your altar right now. Receive our worship as a burnt sacrifice before you this morning. Hallelujah. He's here, he's here. Just continue to worship him. Flow in the spirit, flow with the spirit. Hallelujah. Have your way right now, God, over depression, over suicidal thoughts, over insecurity, over uncertainty. Because you are the real deal. You are the foundation. You are what our feet are established on. You are the rock in our lives. Trouble may come. Winds may blow. But God, the righteous shall remain in you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Receive our worship. Hallelujah. We waiting on you. We waiting on you. Peace be still. Our hope is in you. Our joy is in you. Our love is in you. God is looking for those that will worship him in spirit, not as a spectator but to participate in the flow of the Spirit.
the Spirit of God is flowing like a fresh river of living water right through your circumstance right now. Hallelujah. Open up the gates, open up the dam, and let them flow through you right now, your circumstances. first fruit of the Sabbath of this month and as we prepare for communion, to commune with him God has created us to be in fellowship with him I know we're in a difficult season and that season seeks to sever your connection, your intimacy with God but how many of you are fighting to stay connected on this morning that no matter how much trouble comes, you know that you cannot go a day without his breath, without his touch, without his covering, without his protection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to remember him. We need to keep his thoughts and his deeds and what he's done. Do you realize that today's circumstance or challenge doesn't erase God's goodness and what he's done for you in the past and even doing right now? It doesn't nullify the power of God working in your life. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you. To think that all of a sudden that God has abandoned and has left you alone. And so I want you to go get your elements. We're going to pray. We're going to consecrate them, and we're going to remember him. We're going to rest and magnify him. So go right ahead. Stay in the flow of the Spirit. We're going to receive, prepare for our communion, and we're going straight in the Word. It's amazing how it's amazing how the flow of the spirit is consistent hallelujah let's prepare our hearts let's prepare strengthening us in our faith. And we're still in this, I don't know if you know it, we may have not have mentioned it, but after Resurrection Sunday, we're in this spirit, this, these days of Pentecost. And so God always wants an outflowing of his spirit by which he begins to transform us, empower us by the influence of his Holy Spirit. And as we prepare for communion one we want to say a prayer of just repentance and because God the enemy tries to allow us to disqualify us from what God has already established in our life and so God we thank you again for this time this moment in worship we are so grateful father for your visitation we're so grateful hallelujah we need you we waiting on you we will be steadfast and so we thank you 
for the representation of your blood and your body that symbolizes the new covenant. The perfect lamb was giving for us. So, Father, we ask you to forgive us now continually of our sins. Those things that we have known to do but we didn't do, our disobedience, we thank you for covering it. It's your blood that covers all a multitude of fault. We thank you that we are securing you. The blood has made us securing you. We thank you for your grace that we do not cheapen. Hallelujah. We understand the cost. You paid it in full. You made us debt free from the penalty and the power of sin. And we celebrate right now our confidence in what you have said. You are not a man that you should lie or the son of man that you even need to repent. What you have said, you shall establish in our life. Though it tarry and though it wait, we shall continue in great expectation. Hallelujah. And so we ask you to bless now these elements that represent your body, represent that which people have in their home. And we thank you right now Hallelujah. And as your scripture said on the day that you had your last meal, the scripture says he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, eat all of it. And likewise, you took the cup and you gave thanks and you gave it and you said, drink from it. For this is my blood of covenant, which is poured out for many for your forgiveness of sin. Go ahead and drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bless God. Let's celebrate. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is good. The Holy Spirit is awesome in this place. We're going to get right into the Word because I don't want to delay. I want the Holy Spirit to continue to continue, you'll see the connection between the worship and even the word and how the Holy Spirit orchestrates a thing. We're in this series called Built Different because this season, depending on how you look at it, it's, it's one that's difficult. It seems like it's taken a lot, but I tell you that it's also something that God is establishing. He's, he's trying to galvanize a stronger foundation. He's trying to give you more clarity on what matters most. He is trying to establish, not just for you to engage this, whatever we're going to call this new way of life. I know many of you are living your best life. Some of you are trying to scrap it and fight it and trying to get the good life. But we want an abundant life. We want an adunimous life in God. And the reason why we started this series, because we just didn't want you to resume the same old life. This season of this pandemic and, and all that's wrapped up in it, we want you to begin to reset, reboot, redefine, and restart a life to begin to live an abundant life the way God intended. And so today I want to talk to you from the subject of withstanding the winds of life. Withstanding the winds of life. One of the most powerful forces in nature is wind. Wind is used as a metaphor throughout scripture and different things. And even recently, even upon this week and the last couple of weeks, are, we seem to be in this, in between this interesting weather where it's, it's calm one day and then a, an hour midday we have these winds. Our power has gone out. I don't know about you. This week the power went out twice at the house. And so winds are this forceful thing. Those of us that are familiar with hurricanes and whether it's Sandy here in New Jersey a few years ago or Katrina and, and, and in the states of Texas, we understand that a wind can do some serious damage, that it can tear up some things, that it can kind of blow away some things. 
And, and so winds can knock you over. They can cause some things to fall. They can blow away some valuable things. Your patio furniture could be down the street in your neighbor's yard. Wind can cause some things to be eroded. It can wear some things down. Anybody feeling me? We're talking about some strong winds. Winds can force you to be off course. And if it blows long enough, it could cause you to be worn out. Because whether you're rowing, whether you're trying to adjust your sail, sometimes a sustained wind has a way of wearing you down. And so I want to talk to you today on how to learn how to handle and how to withstand. So even in the most difficult season, you can have your best life in God. So when we're singing and, and we're talking about our hope is in him and we're waiting on him and that is our reality in this moment and it shall continue to be in our moment. And so look, let's look at Proverbs 10, 25 is going to be the main text and then we're going to read some scriptures. We're going to look at some scriptures and text and how Christ dealt with some winds that were blowing in, in the believer's lives. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 25. You probably need to go grab your Bibles or go ahead and get, get your phone. Proverbs 10, 25. Hallelujah. When the whirlwind passes, so when the whirlwind blows, when it passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has what? An everlasting foundation. So although this season we're all experiences, saved, unsaved, just, unjust, Muslim, Christian, Jew, we all are experiencing the season, but we all can come out differently. We, we, how we see it, how we navigate it depends on who's your rock. The question I have for you, do you have an established foundation today? Do you have established foundation today? What kind of winds are blowing in your life right now? Are they winds of change? Are they winds of opposition? Are they winds of temptation? Winds of conflict? <laughs> winds of trouble? Winds of testing? Of your faith, of your integrity? And one thing that we've realized about winds is that winds are uncontrollable. So let's talk about it. I'm not talking about stuff we can influence or have, have control. Of. We're talking about withstanding circumstances that you have no control over. Somebody else's action, a bad report, conflict in the nation, things you have no control of, the things that you cannot control. So what do you do? What do the righteous do? How do, you, how do you be established in your foundation? So what do you do with the things in your life that you absolutely have no control over? And so the Bible uses this word withstand. Again, we're talking about withstanding the winds of life, withstanding the winds of life. And so I looked up this, this definition, right? So when I can't control, this word withstand, you can look it up, Webster. It says, watch this, to remain undamaged by a destructive force. When we're talking about withstand, withstand, to withstand, to remain undamaged by a destructive force. This last year has been a destructive force. And if you haven't stayed connected with God or if you, or if you took for granted the necessary to still assemble, whether it's virtual or not, to touch and agree with those of faith, you will find yourself unable to stand, unable to stand against or oppose the, the, the effect of such a difficult season. You will find that a, a strong destructive force like a wind, if you're unable to resist, the complex trauma will begin to set in. The, the, the secondary and compounding effects of loss, great loss, whether it's health, whether it's life, 
whether it's financial. So this word withstand, it's similar to oppose or to resist. So let's look at Ephesians 6.13. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6.13. Let's, let's look at this text. It talks about the, the full armor of God. Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, take up the full armor of God, not partially, full armor of God, so that you will be able to what? Resist. That same word resist, when you look in the Greek, it actually means to withstand or to oppose or to stand against or to resist. Same word. And having done everything, what? To stand firm. To stand firm. And so God has built us. If we're covered, if we have on the full armor, if we're established in his word, if we're flowing intimately with the Holy Spirit, he has established you to be able to withstand and not to take on damage in the midst of your most difficult circumstances and situation. And so I'm just going to give you three things that are important that you need to understand. If you're going to withstand difficult times, if you're going to withstand things that you have no control over, layoffs, sudden swift changes in your life, you need to establish a stern foundation before life's difficult shifts. This is not something you start boarding up and fortifying your house when you begin to see the weather report. It is something you establish and remain daily. Can I tell you? Daily. This is not something you ask God for a jump every time your battery runs out. This is not what we're talking about. You're not going to be able to withstand the winds of life when God is only important to you in crisis. Can I just keep it 100? So the first thing that if you're going to be able to withstand, if you're going to be able to resist, if you're going to still be able to have some strength and some fortitude, if you're going to have a faith that endures, where you're not going to be tossed to and fro between doubt and unbelief, all within the same day. The first thing you got to understand the significance of is that you need to stay connected to your spiritual family. You need to stay connected. God never intended for you to face death, disease, difficulty, delay all by yourself or on your own. He meant for us to do life in community. Community of believers, a faith be believing community. Not just anyone, but those that can pray you through, those that can point you to the word, those that continue to cheer you on to your best self in God. So you need a spiritual family. So you need to stay connected during these rough times in your life. So let's look at Ephesians 4, 11. I'm going to try to move with this, but this, the spirit of God, he just cut through that. This is in alignment with as we are worshiping. The moment of it's gonna, you're going to tie it together. So that we can remain in him. Ephesians 4, 11. This text here. Paul is talking to the church of Ephesus. I'm just going to sum it up before we read it. it. He's dealing with how he equips the body, right? So F Ephesians 4.11 says, He has given some apostles, prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors, some as teachers. He's given gifts, what? Verse 12 says, for the equipping of the saints, right? For the work of service, the work of service, that's your gifting. That's your personal ministry in the body of Christ, independent of title. So it's for equipping you for your service in the body of Christ to the building up of the body of Christ, right? And then verse 13, until we all attain what unity or oneness in faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature man to, to the measure of stature, it belongs to the fullness. And watch this. So when you understand the significance of being connected, watch this, as a result of being connected, as a result of being equipped, as a result of being built up in the body, we are no longer like children who are tossed here and there, watch this, by waves and carried about by every wind of teaching, 
cultural suggestion. I'm, I'm ab-living and, and I'm amplifying, right, doctrine. So that you're not tossed to and fro. So we need to stay connected to our spiritual family. Second thing, and I'm just going to do three. The second thing is that you need to put into practice everything you are learned or taught. Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. Right? Knowledge is not power. The just shall live by faith. That means walk out faith day by day. And so Matthew 7, 24, Matthew 7, 24, Pastor, you're moving kind of fast. I, I, I think the spirit of God has opened us up for you to receive this. Matthew 7, 24, this is, this is the tail end or the back end of Jesus' teaching on the mount, the sermon on the mount. So Matthew 17, 24, he says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on what? A rock or a solid foundation. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed up against the house. And yet what? It did not fall. Someone said it withstood. It withstands. It resists. It opposes. For why? For it has been founded on the rock. And that rock is Jesus. The rock is the full revelation of his word today. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them, he says, it's like a foolish man that has built his house on sand. And so again, when the rain falls, that's attacking the roof. When the floods come, that's trying to flood your foundation. When the winds blow, that's falling up against the walls of your life. But someone said, I can remain confident and what? Assured. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I've received this word. I've acted upon it. And then I see the manifestation that he has given me the strength to be able to stand, be able to resist. That the pressures of life doesn't cause me to collapse on the inside. Because greater is he that is in me than anything that is opposing me. And so I need to stay connected. with my church family. Stay active, stay, part of, don't make the things of God and the people of God casual in your life. Make them essential and not optional. They should be above the line and not below the line. Y'all know that above the line, you draw the list of all the bills and you draw right here where who's gonna get paid and who's not. That's the above the line, below the line, just in case you didn't know what that meant. But God is above the line. Better yet, he is first in everything else I figure it out. He's first with my time. He's first with my priorities. He's first in my finances. He's first in, in my fellowship. He is the primary relationship that everything is built upon, my marriage, my kids, because it's the only thing that is going to hold. Everything is like else. It's like building with sand. So stay connected with the family, with your spiritual family. You know what that looks like. That's showing up. <laughs> I told you we haven't closed. That's, that's calling people up. Hey, can you pray with me? We're about to start um, May, is it May 12th? It's going to start our new, um, uh, yeah, May 12th, Wednesday, May 12th, is going to start our new uh, small group. We're doing the book, Hind's Feet on High Places. We, some of you are going to get your book in the mail. Um, others, you can order it, but May 12th, we want you to read this week, prepare, and begin to engage, show up to discuss how God can give you hind feet for higher places that he wants to take you. Everybody is selling, living my, my good life and the best life, but we're talking to live your abundant life in God. So stay connected. 
Put in practice what you learn. Don't just be a hearer, but be a doer of God's word. Let it be self-evident. And this last thing here, the third one, turn your focus to how great God is. Watch this now. Turn your focus to how great God is. Matthew 8, 24. Matthew 8, 24. This is what it says. This is Matthew 8, 24, and I'm moving. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered with waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. Okay, give you some context. So uh, they got in the boat, Jesus and his disciple, they're crossing the waters. He's, he's, he's asleep. Now, now watch this. I just want to give you, so you can kind of look in your life. A lot of times when God is about to perform a miracle in your life, oftentimes he, there seems to be an offense that's created. He'll ask you, do you want to be made whole? And I'm like, God, don't you see me cut up in shreds? You know, yes, I want to be made whole. Why would you ask me that? And then a storm will arise and he's sleeping. <laughs> so you got to be careful that sometimes your circumstance will cause an offense, but it's almost necessary for you to rise up and see what God is about to do in your life. In verse 25, it says, and they came to him and they woke him up and said, save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Well, sometimes he said no faith, but thank God right here in this category, it's a little faith. God, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because <laughs> I have a faith crisis right now. He says, he got up and he rebooted the winds and the sea and it became calm. The men were amazed and said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey? So watch this. So when this third thing I said, stay connected. Actually do what you practice, put into practice what you learn. Turn your focus of how great God is. So when I'm going through a situation that I can't control, watch this. This is the secret. I worship. I worship. Even though I'm not in control, does it mean that God isn't? Even though it's not going down the way I anticipated, the way I saw it, God is still seeing clearly. Worship is the secret to withstanding. So if we decided to dwell in that last song a little bit longer, it's because we were making God great over our circumstance. We made a decision not to tell our, 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 our God about our trouble, but we decided that I'm going to rest and remain and I'm going to tell my trouble about my God. So that's why we can dwell there a little bit. Because when I'm battered by a win, and I'm sorry if I may come off as shouting right now, but when I'm battered by a win, I got to remember, I got to focus my attention on how great he is. What I focus on, I begin to receive. So I just choose to worship versus worry. Now my, my heart may be a little troubled, as I'm praying for my son to recover, all right, Mother Butler. But my trust, and I'm going to sit in the peace of God. Don't even have to go to the hospital bread because God knows that I'm going to sit. My heart may be anxious, but I'm going to remain planted. I'm going to withstand the doctor's report, y'all. Hallelujah. Right? So I can't control the wind. I can't control how it, but I can adjust my sail. <laughs> I can fight to remain, my, to keep my perspective. And so God, he, he rebukes it. He steps, so he's on board. And sometimes he's like, hey, God, his psyche, do you hear me? Do you see me, God? Then when I settle myself, his Holy Spirit said, I haven't gone anywhere. I said, okay. Because sometimes when you're in a, a dark place or in, in one, when one scripture says that it was at night, right? 
Let's go to Mark 642. This is going to be my last one, y'all. I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to kind of, the old school say they're going to cut across the field. I never knew what they meant, but that means they're kind of going straight way. <laughs> cut across the field. Growing up as a youth in the church, you didn't know what half the stuff they meant. But they were just positioning you, right? So watch this. Mark 647. And we truly are wrapping up. So it says, when it was evening, I just because I need to connect this part for you. When it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea. Again, they're on a boat again. And he was alone on the line. So now Christ is on land. They're in the boat. Verse 48. So this time, this circumstance, when this blows, God is not on the boat. Jesus is not on the boat with him. He's on shore. We're out there on the lake by ourselves. Verse 48 says, seeing them straining with the oars. You remember Ty, talking about strong winds can wear you down, can wear you out. You're working. You're trying to keep things on thing, and the wind is pushing. It's tossing you. So seeing them strain or struggle, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth night, of, fourth watch of the night, he came walking, right? And so this, to watch this, what do I need you to get from them? Remind yourself how God cares. You, you got to remind yourself how great he is. You got to remind yourself that God cares. He sees. And so oftentimes when we become fearful, one, it's because it's at night. It's in the dark. You go through dark seasons, and sometimes you're feeling, you're feeling for God like you walk in a house at night looking for the light switch and all of that because you're yet familiar with him, but you need to reach out and feel that, God, are you still here? And he says, yes, I am. The other thing you see in this text, and you got to go back and read it because I tell you, if you look back or look at your current circumstances or look back at where you've been in trouble with, you've gotten frightened and fearful and dismayed. You be find yourself security sets, insecurity sets in. Why? Because I'm so far from shore. I'm way out here now, God. And so I become insecure. I become anxious because this is a different place for me. But God sees. He is Elroy, the God who sees. The God that sent the angel to visit Hagar in the midst of a desert. He, he began to create an, a well for her. The other part is when, when you're going through difficult seasons and difficult times, how are you going to withstand? It's the fact that opposition is preventing your progress. You're rowing, and it doesn't seem like you're going anywhere. And so you get frustrated. You get worn out. So these are the things that cause us fear in our life. But I just need you to understand that God sees your struggle. He sees you striving in this season. He sees you overriding your emotion and your senses and going forward in faith. He sees it. Hallelujah. Withstanding the winds of life. Withstanding the ability to resist. The ability to impose. Watch this. I, I love the definition. I love the definition, right? It's not just getting through it. How you come through your trials does matter. Are you going to come out better and stronger? Or are you going to come out jaded? Bitter. I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's a thin line. To withstand, to remain undamaged, unaltered. By a destructive force. To remain the ability to resist or oppose and still be standing. To withstand, another scripture, the fiery darts of the enemy. That's another withstand. Because why? I have the shield of faith. The shield of faith. My faith tells me what I'm seeing. My faith is telling me what I am experiencing. My faith is telling me my reality over the fact that I'm in the midst of a storm. <laughs> when you don't have control of some things, I choose to remain confident and ensure. So, Father, we thank you. 
for your word. We thank you, God, for worship just plowing up our hearts, preparing it to receive a word that only you prepared for us. Father, I pray for everyone who's listening, everyone who's connecting with us. On Thank you, Lord, that we can connect across borders, across county lines, city lines, state lines, across any geographical um, boundary. Thank you for Deutimus Life family, collectively, nationwide, everyone who's walking in covenant and doing life with us. Continue to make this a place that is life-giving, that we can be refreshed. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We give you the, we give you the glory right now for the victory. The fact that we are present, that we showed up in spite of our circumstances, God, is a witness to the power and the strength working in our life right now. And so I pray for that individual, that one that does not know you right now. You can receive salvation. You can receive protection. You can receive peace of mind. We can receive the joy everlasting that give us peace beyond the comprehension of man. And so, Father, I pray this benediction that you send forth your people with blessings, with encouragement, with strength. Where the winds wanted to tear down and erode, take, tossed away some things, has our lives disheveled and disorganized. But God, assemble the pieces according to your covenant, your good intentions toward us, your well-being and loving kindness toward us. We thank you for today. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Just give God a hand, please, right where you are. Give God a hallelujah. Give them your praise, the highest praise. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us. You won't, we won't be gathering this week. Get your book. We're going to read ahead. Sister Crystal is going to be starting out, kicking off our next small group a week from this Wednesday. It's going to be a blessing to you. It's a phenomenal book. It's a narrative. And so we want you to join us. So we're going to Get something in the mail next Sunday, Mother's Day. We are going to be here. We're going to be here, all right? And so God bless you. Go ahead and sow your seed. Go ahead and give and continue to trust God for your greatest abundant life. God bless you. See you soon. I love you.